Welcome, welcome, welcome to Creativity in Focus, a live podcast where we highlight an artist and its art every single week. Today I have a very special guest with me, but first I'm going to ask you to take a second and share this video. Wherever you're watching, you may be watching at creativityinfocus.com, you may be watching on Facebook, you may be watching on YouTube. Whatever you are, there are share buttons there. It really helps us every time you share. If you're watching on places like Facebook, for example, if you open the video and start watching the video, you have the option to give thumbs up, love, faces, all those things. Do do that, please. Especially in a part of the video of this interview that you think, whoa, that's awesome. So give us some hearts because that impacts how this platform show the video. If nobody does anything, nobody likes, nobody comments, nobody does absolutely anything, the video doesn't show to most people. So we really rely on you to get that going for us, okay? Yeah. And of course, because it is a live podcast, we want interaction. We want to know what you're thinking about what we are saying, and we want you to ask questions so my guests can answer to you. So please do that. Wherever you are, there is a chat either below the video or beside the video. You can ask questions at any moment because we are monitoring that, okay? So let's get started. Okay, <laughs> my guest today is Karen Baker, and she's a sculptor. <laughs> is that how you refer to yourself as a sculptor? Or do you use any other terminology? Um, I usually, when I first introduced myself as, you know, well, what do you do? I'm an artist. Okay, good. And when they expound on that, you know, well, wh oh, what, what kind of art? art? I'm, I actually, do you paint? <laughs> yeah, I, in particular, I sculpt. Uh huh. And so, because I, I, it's true, I do sculpture, but I am also a painter. I, okay. I started off painting. Oh yeah, that was the first thing? Yes, painting, oh. and, and I uh, dabbled in sculpture, you know, for from a really young age, and, and um, you know, so I consider myself an artist mm -hmm. in general. So you went into what type of paint first? Acrylic, oil? Oh, I probably started in oil. In oil. And um, I went to... Why get the easiest one, right? Mm -hmm. You go to one that takes <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, I was a teenager, and my mom thought that it would be important for me. It, mm -hmm. She she knew of somebody that was in oil painting, and she thought it would be, and my grandmother was an oil painter. Oh. And she thought it'd be fun if I took some oil painting uh -huh. classes. So that's how I started. But I uh, quickly went to watercolor. Mm -hmm. I love watercolor. Mm. And I love that medium probably the best. Okay. And, and then I dabbled in acrylics. And you get into acrylics when you start doing um, craft yeah. things. Yeah. So I, I did acrylics for a while. And do you still paint? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. every night that? Yeah. And what drove you to sculpting though? I've always liked to sculpt. Mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed making, even as a child, I liked making things out of Play-Doh and, and uh, things. I made, for a long time, I made little earrings, you know, little fun uh -huh. things out of earrings, but never this kind of sculpting. Okay. And then one day, I was walking through a shop, and I saw something on the shelf. It was a, one of those Santas that you see, you know. And I saw that, and, I, and you know how you look at something and you just know mm -hmm. that you can do it? Wow. I was like, I can totally do that. How fun would it be to make one of those? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I, I went home and I bought some of this polymer clay because I thought that's probably what you would use. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know. I just if it was or not. Just yeah, say, because I've used right. polymer clay before making my little earrings and, <laughs> and figures and things. So I just got started on it, and uh, and it went from there. And I did make a pretty good little face, mm -hmm. and and uh, I thought, you know, there's got to be a group that does this. Mm -hmm. So I got on the computer, started looking at you know who this kind of art, and I I stumbled across Jack Johnston's things, and Patricia Rose. Uh -huh. I mean, she was big at the time too. And I, oh my gosh, there is a whole. World, world of yes, this, yes. and I am going to get in on it. So that's what I did. That was like what, ten years ago? Or yeah, more? Mm -hmm. ten years. Yep. That's cool. Before we move on, for the for you, if you've never heard of Karen Baker before, I want to show some of her pieces to you right now, and I would like you to tell me a little bit. First of all, how long ago did you sculpt each one of them, and what was the inspiration behind that? Mm. What do you say we start with the lady? A little washer lady? Yeah, uh, that's one of my, all of my favorites. I like her too. I would say probably I did her a month ago. Oh, just 
So yeah. recent. Oh, oh. recent. She, because uh, I'm, I'm working on my Quinlan show that's yes. coming up, and, and that's a real character show. Uh huh. And so I want to do a series of el oh, cool. elven people. Uh huh. And so uh, when I thought about it, I thought, well, an elven village, really. Mm -hmm. So what better than a washerwoman? Yeah. yeah an right. elven water washerwoman. Uh -huh. So she's not very old. That's very cool. And then and this the little, little guy, guy was, I think he was last year. Mm hmm. Yeah, because he was in another show. I mm -hmm. remember you also created yes. a tree or something for him, yeah, right? Yeah, he was sitting under it. And sleeping there, yeah. This guy was, is about three weeks old. Wow. What yeah. was the inspiration behind this him, guy? Him, I've always wanted to do a little guy holding a lantern, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, like a little watchman kind of thing. The little town crier, I guess you would call him. They walk mm -hmm. around and make sure everybody's in their beds, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that was his inspiration. I've always wanted to make one of those. Um, and this is a musician, right? A little musician. That's, that was, I finished him last week. <laughs> Ooh. Tell me, tell me one thing. You, you mostly sculpt uh, art dolls at 14 inches, right? Yeah, now I do. I, I started off doing eight, the typical 18 inch uh -huh. uh, figure. And why did you change? I just like the size, the size better. better. Yeah, uh -huh. it's easy to ship. True. Um, collectors like to buy them a little bit smaller now mm -hmm. because they're, you know, Space yeah, is space shrinking is for everybody, right? Exactly. Yeah. They're a little more manageable. Um, How long does dress. it take you to make one doll? Just one. Depends on the complexity of mm -hmm. the, but like this little musician took me a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was a complicated piece mm -mm, for you? Not complicated. No. One week and, and that includes the costuming, which you also do, yes. right? Yes, yes. And that t tend to be a challenge for a lot of sculptors when it comes to the costuming because it's a whole different art, mm -hmm. right? It is. Yeah, but yeah. You, you had a past where you so were So my mother right? is a seamstress. Okay. Um, my sister was a seamstress. And um, so I come from a family of, of sewers, you know. Uh -huh. So I started sewing clothes when I was just a teenager. Um, so yeah, before I ever did any kind of art, I was sewing. Mm -hmm. I was sewing my own clothes. I made my own wedding dress. You know, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm a sewer. Uh -huh. And so um, I just I know how things come together. I've studied patterns, and and really that's all it is is understanding how pattern pieces connect and go together. And then once you understand that, you know, you can sew. I mean, it's just sewing on a very small, small scale. scale yeah. Some things need to be sewn by hand. Mm -hmm. But the clothes tell a lot about the character, They do. Right? Costuming is everything. Yeah. It's everything in, in it's, these dolls. Now, you, you made the Santa, which is funny because I think you're the third sculptor that I know that started sculpting a Santa. Isn't that funny how he is so inspirational that way? Yeah, that's true, that's true. So then you found some people that you, you learn with, mm -hmm. and how did you transition from a hobby to a business? Um, well, really what it, what it started out, and I hate to admit this, but it started out as being, a, a, I needed the money. Mm -hmm. I needed to find a way that I could make some extra money for myself. And really it wasn't a lot of money that I needed. Mm -hmm. I just needed maybe a couple extra, of extra maybe a couple hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. to, um, to help so I could survive. Yeah. So I started looking at what was selling on eBay and I started thinking, you know, I saw these artists that were just making thousands of yeah. dollars with their, and they were beautiful works mm -hmm. of art. Well, obviously I'm not there yet, right? <laughs> so I was thinking, well, if I really work at it though, I know I can, I knew in my heart, I had the gift. I, I could do it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't have it right then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but here somewhere. I knew it was the there. Writer. I yeah. had that confidence, but I knew I didn't have it yet. Uh -huh. And so I just needed to apply it so that I could get to that level. So I worked and worked and worked. I, I took from different artists that I really admired, not copied them, mm -hmm. but I admired their style and tried to get to that level mm -hmm. and to where, okay, mine isn't there yet. And, and I was very honest with myself. I didn't try to say, oh, well, it's there. cute. No, it's, it's cute. cute. It's good enough. No, it wasn't good enough. I really worked uh -huh. hard. Uh -huh. I would make face after face after face. And my family and friends are like, that's great. What do you mean? No, it's not great. You, it's okay, mm -hmm. but it's not great. And I want to be, I wanted to be great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had that desire. Uh -huh. So once I got to the point where I was okay, I started to sell things. Mm -hmm. And 
and I just, it went from being, you know, okay, now I can make a little bit of money. I want to be really good at this. And, uh -huh. and it just developed into kind of, well, this is my business now. This is, you know, it just, it just it's kind of snowballed. I, I, it didn't really, it wasn't something I set out to become mm -hmm. a hobby. I mean, a profession, but... Mm -hmm. But now it is. I went so, into. So you went from okay, I need some money to hey, this is my business. I just need I just need a little bit of money yeah. for the month. Which to, you know, you know oh everybody, we have all this uh, resistance to money. Mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of cultures, it comes because of religion. In others, just the way we we were raised. But the fact is, uh, there was a study in America, not not long ago that the average person will lose a home to foreclosure mm -hmm. because of $300. Exactly. That's all they need. Yep. <laughs> right? So so yeah, you you get you have your hands, you know you have a talent, you go and make something, you sell, solve problem, right? Mm -hmm. And artists are problem solvers most of all, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing you said is this I worked hard I think there's a lot of perception out there that a person that is talented, they don't need to do anything, right? They have oh, the yeah. talent. Oh, you're so talented, right? I've been told that my whole life. Oh, Karen, yeah. you're so talented. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I know I have the gift, but talent is nothing if you don't apply it. It's raw. It's raw, raw talent. And then you have to I add have the skills. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. you definitely have to apply it. Doesn't but matter they how don't talented come, you think you are. <laughs> they don't come with two or three sculpting no. exercises, right? Mm -hmm. uh, before we move on, Beverly saying, hi, ladies. Uh, Chase is saying, I'm an amazing sculptor. <laughs> Wendy, you ask, hello, Tammy. Hi, Karen, Nancy. Uh, hey, my girls, I'm so happy to see you. I'm doing the happy dance. <laughs> and Kathleen Mullen, I absolutely adore Karen. Aww. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank Ask you. away. She's yeah. here for that. <laughs> and so, I love to hear from my, I love people to write to me and, and not call me. Mm -hmm. I don't like calls. Don't call me. Um, but I, I do love texts. You see, we have several things in common. You, I you do don't realize that. The phone. Yeah, I think I know we do. My father was an oil painter, too. Mm. That's where I got my passion for, for art in general. And I totally hate to speak on the phone. I really <laughs> don't know why. Maybe that's why I threw my, the water no, I yesterday. just don't <laughs> like to talk on the phone. Not my, my ear thing. gets hot. I mm. just, ugh. So you said you work. You work very hard, mm -hmm. sleepless nights until you got All-nighters to... sometimes I would pull. I I'd believe. get really into it, and I just, I got to get But these. what was your reference? What, like, oh, now I'm good. What was hmm. that reference? You knew you were not there yet, mm -hmm. but what was your target? How did I Where know? I, how did I know I was yeah, what getting did, there? Did you have a one person that you 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 thought I want to be like him or her, mm -hmm. or or what? I you, did. You, you uh, needed some parameters, right, to know. Oh, now I'm good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I I did um, have a little moment where I thought I was getting pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I would have people say, well, you know, you could really work okay, and that knocks you down a peg. Mm -hmm. So really what I probably struggled with the most was my self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And I would, and uh, has to be hands down, one of my biggest idols that I looked in the very beginning was Mark Dennis. Mm -hmm. He made amazing, and what he amazed me the most was the, his life that he captured mm. in his um figures. And so I strived, I would just study his work and, and see, you know, I talked to him a couple times and, and I, I bought his videos, mm -hmm. I bought his instructional things, and I really tried to not mimic, but I patterned myself after him. I think, you know, you know a lot of people, and we you know we interview, and we have a lot of artists here all the time, and they always go mimic model because mimic in our model. subconscious mo uh, mind, we are thinking it's wrong to copy. Yes. But, you know, we need to understand that as human beings, we learn by mimicking. Absolutely. That's how your kid learned how to walk, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with that. You're not copying the work of another artist, but you, exactly. you go to do something similar, and then you start finding your voice, mm -hmm. correct? And mm -hmm. you go from there. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think we need to, to have it clear. It's okay to mimic when you're trying to learn. Mm -hmm. What's not okay is to copy something and tell, then try to sell as yours. Yes, It's exactly. a whole different ball game there. Exactly. But I think we all look at something 
that we like, and we first go to something similar, and then once we, we understand the process, we move on. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So having said that, um, Mark Dennis does a lot of um, nudes. He does a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, figures, full mm -hmm. figures, not just soft bodies. In fact, I don't even think he does soft body. But he, uh, so I had done this figure and I took it to a show uh -huh. and I thought it was pretty good. I put it on the table. In fact, I really, in my heart, I felt like this is probably the best I've done. <laughs> and I was really proud of my it. My masterpiece. Yeah, so I brought it to the show and everyone was raving about it, uh -huh. you know. It was like, a doll art show? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And it was sitting on the table and Mark Dennis himself came over and saw oh, it. Oh my gosh. And he said, and you were shaking. I was, I was like, oh. <laughs> he came over and said, he tapped his table like this and he goes, he knew that I was Jack uh -huh. Johnson's apprentice. He goes, you should be teaching classes. Look at that. And right there, I was like, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm there. I, I mean, I'm, I'm there. Mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he thinks I'm there. If he oh. thinks I'm there, oh my gosh. That was the moment uh -huh. Uh -huh. that I really thought, okay, I still have way to go. Right, I but still I got have something. To learn, I got but something. I'm getting good. Yeah. And if Mark Dennis can can See say that, that and, mm -hmm. and say something good about it, then I have, because he's not the kind of person that gushes over anything. He's uh -huh. very, you know, I mean, I don't know him super well. I'm not saying I, you know, we're best friends. <laughs> right, but you know <laughs> but he's I not. Know it, I know his personality, and I know he's not like, oh my, he wouldn't say that if he didn't think right, it was, right. it, if it had potential. So that moment you got validation that was my, from oh another my gosh, person that was that a qualified point, opinion. It was. He was a sculptor, yeah. right? It's not your mom, your aunt saying, right? right? I think, I think that's so very that important. So that was my moment. <laughs> uh, Nancy Coddington is saying, hi, my girl. I am so happy to see you. That, that I said already. <laughs> uh, Gwen Nicholson, so excited. I just started making similar figures five months ago, and you really inspire me to keep going and refine my oh, work. Oh, good. <laughs> Nancy, uh, I want to be like Karen when I grow up. <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. I'm in line. Uh, I, I'm so thankful for that turning point moment for you. Yeah. Because imagine if th that didn't happen. It was a I'd total different I'd story. I'd still be wondering, you know, am I ever going to be as, as, as good or, or not? I still don't think I'm as good. I and mean, he is just amazing. But mm. um, will I ever be in that class mm -hmm. is, you know, That's is what I... That's what yeah. it It's great. Uh, Lindsay, where do you find your inspiration and what is your first step? Face, fabrics, character, story? <sighs> That's a good oh, question. What? Yeah. Um, my inspiration, you know, I, I'm super inspired by medieval, um, that period, mm -hmm. that medieval period. I watch a lot of period films, more for the costuming. I love the costuming. I just finished watching the, um, the Tudors, you know, uh -huh. the Anne Boleyn uh -huh. story. And mostly because I love watching those dresses that they wear. Oh, and the, even the men, you know, their flamboyant jackets and the sleeves. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, I love watching stuff like that. Uh -huh. So that's very inspirational to me. And you'll see that in my pieces. That from time to time, I'll do something really flamboyant. And uh -huh. I usually pick it up from something like that. So you going into a show was, <clears throat> uh, would you say it was one of the first things you did? Or you were already selling dolls before you went to a show? Um, I was selling a little, but I and got... did you use an auction site or sold uh, Yeah, to eBay. People? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, I was doing a little on eBay. My first show, because I was affiliated with Jack Johnston, um, you know, he, I got right in with a guild uh -huh. and they were, um, they were going to the shows. Mm -hmm. And so I just naturally went along went with that. Them. Yeah. Uh -huh. So um, I would say... I went to the shows because of that. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't have been, had that um, interaction, with yeah, the group. I probably wouldn't have gone to the shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice group to be in with because they're all kind of together and you know, I'm you're a big not on advocate. your own. Yes. Yeah, it's, I think we all should belong to groups and absolutely. guilds, associations, uh, either if you have in town or if, if they exist online. But mm -hmm. it is important, right? Because it, it the exchange, give me the push. Yeah. it gives you the motivation too. Because mm -hmm. being alone, I don't know where is your studio, but being alone in the basement or in the studio. Yeah, that's where my studio is. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I think for most people, well, th that isolates you mm -hmm. of a lot of opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do everything alone. You can get a table with other people. I mean, yes. there are opportunities. 
business out there. And you know, going to a show, I mean, at first I thought, oh, I'm gonna sell stuff, but I didn't sell things for the first three or four shows. Okay, so let's go there. So uh -huh. you went through first three shows, didn't sell. Didn't sell things. Okay, besides feeling like, yeah, oh, like God. why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what was your thought process then? Well, yeah, it's it's disappointing, you know, and they all say, don't, don't expect to sell anything. You're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to sell something. <laughs> mm. um, but the inspiration that you get from going and seeing other people's, that was probably the biggest um, eye-opener for me after mm -hmm. I got over the disappointment of not selling anything. <laughs> Um, you know, just being around other artists and seeing what they're doing and, and, and drawing inspiration from, from that um, kept me going. Back. When, so you need to go back to that time. Mm -hmm. you, you had a show, you didn't sell. Okay, who did, did you blame? The buyers, the mm -hmm. show, the promotion, <laughs> yourself. Yeah, we all blame the we all blame the show <laughs> and the buyers. They're not buyers. Oh, nobody They're not buyers. sold. They're Don't not, worry about it. Nobody people. sold anything. Um, nobody uh, sold anything. Right. You hear that every yeah, show. Yeah, you, you do. <laughs> so when I was first going, they blamed it on the recession. Like you oh. know, the doll market just crashed. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody's selling anything. It's really a hard, hard market now. Um, don't feel bad. That's really everybody was saying that, mm -hmm. and and it'll come back. Don't don't worry. Just keep doing what you're doing, and and uh, so that's what we did. And and I wasn't although I wasn't the only one that wasn't selling. Right, and right. the people that did sell maybe sold two or three pieces. Now it wasn't like a, you know. And that, as anything else, in, at that moment, was almost overnight that that happened. Right? Yes. Did it ever come back? Not like it, not, not like it was, court. not like it was. It's, uh, it was, Jack loves to tell the story of, you know, when he started, that's when it was really booming. Mm -hmm. And he could sell, you know, 12 figures at a, at a show for, you know, $6,000 a piece. You know, he mm -hmm. walked out of there just going, ah! <laughs> and that is when it was at its peak. And, and yeah, I don't think it's ever, for one of a kind dolls, I mm -hmm. don't think it's ever come back, come back to, what it was. to that, but. You know, having said that, um, personally, I, mm -hmm. I'm not ringing my own bell here, <laughs> but I haven't had any problems selling. Mm -hmm. um, I have a really good following. Um, I go to all the shows. I don't know if that's why, but I have fantastic collectors that, that love what I do and, and they keep me in the money, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't, I can't speak for any other artists, but, um. But you also, despite you being Sally and it's okay, you still, you were out there. Mm -hmm. You you were with keep, social media. Yes. Uh, of course, you, you Curious shows. Mondo has Curious been great Mondo. for me. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you're putting, because again, you have many artists that they understand their talent, they understand what they produce is cool, but it's like, I'll be here waiting and somebody oh, yeah. will come because I'm worth Right, mm -hmm. and, and that's a trap. Yeah, it is. Right, because your own ego will insulate you from. Oh, if I can say anything about anything, it's you know you cannot have an ego. Mm -hmm. You can't. You have to just sometimes you have to just humble yourself and sell something yeah. for way what it. You know, yeah. you know it's worth more, mm -hmm. but sometimes you just have to let it go. Let it go. Yeah. And and just know that you can make others, and just getting it out there sometimes is. Yeah, you know, I'm it not saying to sell yourself you super know. short, but sometimes yeah. sometimes you, you do have to lower that ego a little. <laughs> do you do you still use auctions? I haven't for years. for years. I've huh? I've been really lucky. Um, Facebook has been great for me. I put something on, and I so have a Facebook, good following. Here's the thing. It's been a huge source mm -hmm. of sales for a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. It's a is a fantastic thing, of course. It's, it's a fantastic thing to market something as well. Uh, I can give you an idea of a podcast. Uh, traditionally, you would do a podcast and put on podcast directs, and you would wait forever to really gather an audience that, you know, you could say it's a good volume. And, and today, like we are doing right now, mm -hmm. you reach an audience that is unbelievable mm -hmm. for a podcast. Mm -hmm. It's still like this if you compare it to TV right. and, mass, and mass media, but it's amazing. But we know that Facebook is going through a turmoil mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And... What if you went away? It would be hard. It would be, it it would would be, be really hard, hard for me. It'd be, it'd be hard for me. I, 
have to say I'm pretty addicted to mm -hmm. Facebook. <laughs> so if it goes away, I don't know. I have a love and hate relationship, but it's a huge piece when it, it comes it to business. Yeah. Right. Uh, Nancy's, um, Terry, Terry Morris, I love your sculptures, especially your costuming. They are such great characters. Thank you. Before going to the others, there was a time that you, or I don't know if you still do, but you would costume for other people, yes. correct? Yes, uh-huh. Is that something you still do? or Not very stop? often. Not very often. Mm -mm. Was that a good source of income? Mm -mm. No? <laughs> <laughs> Too much? Well, it, it, well... No That's what you hear from seamstress when they, they create for other people exactly. as well. It's a lot of work for the money, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And nobody wants to hear that their a costume for their doll is going to cost them $200. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants that. They're thinking 30 40 bucks. Yes. And there is no way mm -hmm. I would sit down and make a costume for somebody for less than $200. I just wouldn't do it. So w the last time I got approached and wanted this, you know, elaborate, and I was like, well, that's a $500 costume at best. Mm -hmm. And they just went, well, oh my gosh, I was thinking they wanted, 50. They wanted beads and, mm -hmm. you know, I just was like, there's no way. Mm -hmm. There's no way I would make, do that for less than 500 bucks. And they just went, oh, yeah, do it yourself then. <laughs> not only, not only the work, but also the materials. You're not going to be using uh, cotton that you buy for quilting. I mean, one piece yeah. of wool, it's not cheap. No. Even a small one. So you have, but they don't take, I, I get that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nancy is asking, is there a creation that you would never sell? Um, <laughs> you know, I really, I am loving my, my uh, mother nature right now. Mm -hmm. I'm really liking She's that gorgeous. one. And I can't say I would never sell her because... If she had a price, I probably would, but uh -huh. she, it's close. No, no, there isn't a creation I would never sell. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Jared Shiftlet, actually, we interviewed him and his brother about two weeks oh, ago. The, oh, those my gosh. guys are amazing. Yeah, I, did, I didn't I see, know they were I my idols, go, oh, but they are my yeah, idols. <laughs> they are mine too. I love it. I'm watching this Karen Baker in a forum as a forum member and won the first Curious Mondo Challenge. That's true, you won, <laughs> right? <laughs> Did I win that? I, I don't remember that. Day. So we had that a few months ago, and it was just because we had f five sculptors in town. Yeah, the same it time. was something fun. It's it not was... a big town, so that was a big deal. And said, "Let's do this competition, right?" And then we decided as a challenge that they would uh, sculpt the aardvark. Yeah. And Karen was the only <laughs> one that knew what that was. <laughs> Because uh, I'm kind of an animal freak, you know, I love <laughs> my animals. <laughs> when it comes to the marketing part, uh, Beverly is asking, what is your best tip to create a following for you? Oh, gosh. That is a, um, I started on eBay. Mm -hmm. So I got a pretty good following on eBay. And then... Do you, th do you think that kind still of works? followed me. Yeah, I think so. I haven't I, I sold know a for lot a couple of, of years. But, mm -hmm. you know, my eBay followers followed Follow me to everywhere. Facebook. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and every time I went on to eBay, they would ask, and I'd say, well, you can find me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so I'd get a following that way. And I, go from there. Yeah. Well, I, I do know, I haven't been in a show with you, but I do know that when she's on the show. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. You, you kind of pester everybody. <laughs> and <laughs> there are tons of, yeah, so. <laughs> I, I am a people person. I, yeah. I network. I go around, talk to people. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think the, the way to really um, get a good following is, is be, you yeah. know, friendly and likable. And, and, and you do you need know. to get to a point where people will follow. Because, again, yeah. things, they have their prime time, like eBay had. Mm -hmm. Facebook might continue, might not, but you need to keep your eyes open. I've been testing one, and I know, I know actually Jared is there, because at least the profile is there. Uh, Vero is V-E-R-O dot C-O. It's a new social network. Mm -hmm. And most of the people there are artists. Mm. So it's interesting, because when a social network starts, you usually have a lot of gamers going mm -hmm. first, right? Mm -hmm. And... For me, they're not my audience. Yeah. But this one is a little different. So I've been paying attention because for me, as for you, it is also a business, mm -hmm. right? The, the social media part. So you have to keep your eyes open because, opening up. for example, if things don't solve with Facebook, 
then you know you mm -hmm. had MySpace, you had yeah, you had yeah. so many good companies that went away or. Well, so when one door closes, another one opens. So and you just yeah. have to keep op looking Opening. for that door that's going to open. And then take your crowd with you. Exactly, right? and that's what happened really with or for eBay for me because I you know I was doing eBay for, eBay for so many years and had these followers and then it just got so um, you know just mm -hmm. the everything. Everybody I was just, goes like, and I was with the, yeah. Yeah, yeah with eBay and it. And so I just moved from, and now it's just by accident, really. Um, Facebook just, you know, I'm posting to show people my, because people are interested in my works in progress. Mm -hmm. um, I show them, and oh my gosh, is that for sale? So there you go. Yeah. I mean, I'm not purposefully putting it out there right. to sell, but it just does. It, it happens. So, it's just a happy accident. <laughs> <laughs> a very happy accident. Yeah. I want it to happen every week. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, thank you for mentioning the importance of failure. Pushing through is what an artist needs to. And we fail in life, right? Oh, Many goodness. Times. If, I, if I had a nickel for a, every head that cracked, yeah. every head that just didn't make the pot, you know, I have a box full of just... <laughs> discard you can't quite throw them away i carve their eyes out and recycle their <laughs> I eyes your nose. <laughs> yeah you know i mean just and you th start thinking i have gone through buckets of clay mm -hmm. you know and you can't think about it like that you just have to keep pushing forward and, and don't think about your failures too much I you know, learn from them but don't dwell on it Failures are still results. They are still learning. Right. Yeah. So what, I, I think everything in life is really what's the take from it, mm -hmm. right? And you can say, and you know, I have failed more times than I can mention, and you know, yeah. I went to shows and didn't sell anything. The thing is, you can see that oh, I'm a failure. I'm not good, or I cannot do this, or I'm not. I'm not good at selling. I hear that so much. Yeah. I'm not good at selling. But if you have a husband or you ever had a boyfriend, you're selling. Right? Absolutely. If you do what your dog asks you to do, you're being sold. It's part of human nature, and mm -hmm. we have this whole thing about it. But when you fail, you have to see, okay, I got a result. Not the one I wanted, mm -hmm. but it's still a result. How do I move from this result to the one I really want? Exactly. Instead of thinking failure as this you know, sin mm -hmm. that, or injustice that happened to you, mm -hmm. it's okay, it's a result, not the one I like, but now what can I do? Really? Here at Curious Mondo, we do this, especially my daughter and I, we do this constantly. We mm -hmm. have at least three meetings a week, and we are always monitoring stuff, because you have to, but keeping... What is going on? And if there is a trend, mm -hmm. we stop and see, first of all, what am I doing wrong here? Mm -hmm. Because it's very easy to blame the environment, the economy, yeah. the clay, whatever. And how can I learn from that? You and know, and now how do from that? use this to, to go ahead? So, Absolutely. Uh, no, uh, your dolls have fabric bodies, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the inside is a, is a wire armature and the fabric is actually built over the, mm -hmm. the wire armature. Uh, Noemi is here. She hey, wants, Noemi! She, Noemi Smith, if you don't know her, <laughs> our very first what episode had Noemi, and she wants to throw stuff at Karen, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has the sculpting, Chase is asking, has sculpting ever felt like work to you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there has been, have been times I've taken on a commission that is a challenge and and I have a certain deadline, and it has felt like absolute work. Mm -hmm. I, I think to myself, oh, I've got to get this done, mm -hmm. and I can't do anything else till I get this done, and then yes, it feels like work, and I hate that. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's life. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to knuckle down, and, and you're a professional. I feel like I, you know, I have a pretty professional attitude when it comes to, if somebody asks me to do something I, and I say, yes, I can do that, mm -hmm. I have an obligation to, to do, do that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where my professionalism comes in. Not all artists have that, mm -hmm. um, but I like to pride myself on that. I like to say, if I tell you I'm going to do that, you it's going to be done. I'm like if I tell you I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there, mm -hmm. even if there's traffic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. I, know, I think that's my own personal One of the creed. most important things in a relationship of any type is trust. Mm -hmm. And when trust is gone, everything else is gone. Yeah. And in a, in a business, I mean, like artists, we like to be free will. We like sure. to, you know, to go our way. But in business, you have to be 
trustable. Is that well, right if you thing? want to succeed Trust and you thing. want people to come back to you, or you know, sure mm -hmm. they're going to come to you for one thing, but then they're going to say, "Oh my God, she was a nightmare to work with," right. and I am never going back to her. I've had people come back again and uh -huh. again and again, so that speaks for itself. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's... Well, and uh, is there something in life that you can do for fun forever, still make money with it, that sometimes it doesn't feel like work? I don't think so. I really don't. I think that that's life sometimes, and not all the time. Yeah. But, but sometimes are... it's not that fun, and mm -hmm. I have to just go, oh, Deadlines are I'm going to get through this, <laughs> yeah? and then I'm going to say to myself, you know what, for a couple months, I'm not going to take any commissions. Mm -hmm. I, I need to just be able to create what I want to create. Now, there are lots of uh, artists that they do not like to take commissions. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. you, you do take commissions. I do. What's so I like your the take? Money. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> Why I'm really not? honest. I'm the really money's honest. there calling me. It's good money. Yeah. Tell you. <laughs> there, is, there is a saying, Paul Calling, and there is a marketer. He says, if people want to give you money, Take it. Take it. <laughs> right? And, and, and it is true, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to say no, but you have. Okay, since we are talking about money, Average price of one of your sculptures out there in shows? $1,200. $1,200, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if a commission comes around, is there a, a base price point? $1,200. $1,200. <laughs> $1, <laughs> so every time you're saying no, $1,200. Yes. Flying. Tweet away. Tweet away. Yeah, away. The lowest I'll do one for is $600. <laughs> um, but that's still that's $600. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. That's the lowest I'll, I'll uh -huh, do one for. Uh -huh. But that's 600 bucks, and that's to me, that's a lot that's of money. That's money, right? It pays, yeah. a, pays a lot of bills. It does. Nancy's saying, I knew you would say Mother Nature. She's the one I would want. Yeah, she's. Katie <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Beckett, it's only a failure if you don't learn from it. Nancy, when you are sculpting a creation, a person, do you ever feel like another one is screaming to come out? Absolutely. All the time, right? <laughs> Absolutely. That is a good point because sometimes I'll be right in the middle of doing something and I'll just have to put it down and start something else mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of a, um, a weakness that I have I get um, sidetracked uh -huh. really easily but something will just scream at me I want to be created and in fact right now I'm, I'm preparing for two shows the Quinlan and another one later on the other one is Strictly Halloween, and, and I love Halloween. I know. I love to do really scary things. Not scary, but, you know, weird. She does scary things yeah. when she's around here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I'm getting ready for the Quinlan, but then I, oh, I want to do this warlock. Uh -huh. And I just had to just put... And I should be concentrating on this, but I didn't. I went ahead and did something there. Mm -hmm. um, I go back and forth. So, yeah, that happens a lot that, to that's me. That's a tough one, right? <laughs> I, I, for example, it takes I was, some discipline to I say no. I was sculpting um, a fox, and while I was doing that, I already knew my next two. Yeah. So my question to you is, how do you keep your creativity in focus? Because mm -hmm. ideas and creativity can be liabilities because it keeps us mm -hmm. to all every over. single, all over, and we never get anything that's accomplished. That's where your discipline comes in. Mm -hmm. You, ha As an artist, you have to exercise a little bit of discipline. And but it, that's not fun. I know it's not. Uh, we are artists and, because we and, want fun. And, you know, artists are notorious for just going, ah, what yeah. the hell, yeah. do whatever I want. Well, yeah, that works for some artists that have unlimited funds and can do whatever they want, but the reality is you have to pay your bills, and if you want to, you know, you have to somehow pull up that discipline to say, no, mm -hmm. I'm really going to stay focused on this, and, and or maybe I'll work, this, I do this a lot, I'll work a little bit on this, and then I'll work a little on this, uh -huh, uh -huh. and I break it up, and I think, well, I've done a little on that, so now I can do a little here. <laughs> You're becoming work. And that helps, That's that helps we're... my inner. Uh-huh, to, to keep in, yeah. in focus. Yeah. So Karen, I totally lost the question, so I'm going to read something. <laughs> She's an artist. <laughs> J yeah, right. Jared is saying, real talk, this is good, Donna. <laughs> Uh, in your last course, you mentioned that the characters are very heat sensitive. How do you prevent a disaster from happening if you have to ship one in the summer? Mm, huh. That is a good question. I try not mm -hmm. to do that. I try to plan um, my sculpts around the heat. And I have worried about it a lot. But there is a way that you can wrap them. Um, it's a... I want to say it's like a, some kind of a styrofoam, mm. and it's actually insulating, okay. so it helps even with the heat. 
it helps um, disperse the heat a little bit so they're not just cooking in a box, you know, and, and any little bump. Mm -hmm. Also, a, a really important thing is, even when it's hot, is to pack them really, really carefully. So that T tell me more or less, for example, that that is a complicated piece, right? Which one? The, the lady, the, the washer, washer lady. Can I take her? It's off yours. Here? You can yeah, touch she... it. I cannot touch it. <laughs> so to uh, ship yes, her. Yes, to ship. So she's bendable, right? But I don't want to bend her to the point where the collector will get her and go, oh, how do yeah. I put how do this I put back? It back? It's you know? not like the picture. Exactly. Right. So I know that her arm will bend right up, hmm. and it's pretty easy to grab it and bend it back down. Okay. But if I bend it up close to her body, now this one's okay because it's it's against her body already. So okay. that's so then I would wrap it really tight. Not so tight that it's gonna hit against her face, but I'd even put a a, a piece in between here and here to so support. that if it did mm -hmm. bump it. And then I would just wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. Put it up a little bit more. Yes, like that. I'd wrap it, wrap it, wrap it like a little cocoon, uh -huh. and then I would, I would stick her in a layer of styrofoam peanuts okay. and pack her down really good, um, put her in a box, and then pick the box up and shake the hell out of it. <laughs> and then just spray and, and no, nothing no, happens. No, if, if you shake it and you hear any movement or any sound mm -hmm. at all, at it's all. not packed good enough. Mm. So that is how you know. If you pick it up and do that and you don't hear any movement or, sh or rattling or shifting, it's packed good enough. And now this little girl could go clear across the world. And I, I would bet money that mm -hmm. she wouldn't break good. and she'd be okay. And then you can put you a little Because you never note. know what they go through in those Oh, boxes. I know. I, we get me, stuff here that oh, is scary. I got to tell you this story. So this last show that I went to in Asheville. I, I take a big hard suitcase and I fill it top to bottom with bubble wrap on the top, bubble wrap in the, on the bottom, dolls in the middle, just like I'd be shipping. I, mm -hmm. I put bubble all around them and then I pick it up and shake it and there's no shifting and it's okay. Mm -hmm. So I pack them like that for my show and I get on the plane and I'm sitting, <laughs> I'm sitting on the plane. I'm looking, I have a window seat. I'm looking out the window and I see the uh, oh, the carry thing. <laughs> carry <her> come up. <laughs> That's scary. And my suitcase is green, and it's very you know easy uh -huh. spot. And I saw it. I was like, Oh, oh my doll! Oh, there's my there's oh my, my thing. Oh my god! I'm watching it, and the guy guys are unloading them, and I s literally see the guy pick it up mm -hmm. over his head and slam it just oh. on the on the conveyor belt. I just I was at the window like this. No! <laughs> <laughs> they are my no! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was just mortified that oh. he would pick it up and just boom. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, my dolls, fortunately, none of them were broken. Wow. They were all fine. Mm -hmm. But to watch, that's at an airport. Can you imagine what they do at the UPS or, oh, gee. you know, we got a box here the other day. It had fragile written all over. Oh yeah, it doesn't help. And we were really thinking, did it fall from the airplane? Because <laughs> <laughs> nothing came right. It's, hor <laughs> it's horrible. So this is how you you pack it. But it's okay if you tell your collector, I don't ship during summer as well, right? Because or, yeah. there are many products that they don't ship during winter, for example. Mm -hmm. So it would be okay at least to avoid the heat. Just to say, you know, let's. Yeah, is it okay if we wait a month? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I don't know how long this is going to sit in somebody's truck. And um, you know, I've packed it really well, but even a little bump will, will, could snap a finger off. And most collectors are like, yeah, you know, I appreciate your, mm -hmm. you know, taking... I've never had it happen yet, but I'm always pretty careful not to ship around the August, September time is okay. the hottest part of the year. Do you always, uh, uh, how do you say, check in your, your dolls or do you carry it on oh, the Oh, on a plane? Uh-huh. No, I put them in a suitcase. I don't know, after this last experience of, <laughs> you don't you know, know. watching I heard that. Jack once say that he was going through TSA, and they actually uh, took the head off the door. That used to happen, but it doesn't happen it anymore. It doesn't happen mm -hmm. anymore. Can you imagine, no. like, the heart attack yes, right there? exactly. Ooh. That doesn't happen anymore. Um, Tammy is asking, do you charge more for a commission piece than you would for a doll of the same size that you sell at shows? Do I charge more? More for, for a commission? No. No. Mm -mm. I personally don't. I, maybe some people do, but I don't like to ding, I don't like to ding my 
clients <laughs> like that. <laughs> Lisa, do you think sticking to one style is a key to success so people know what to expect from you? I'm all over the place right now trying to find what I like doing. Well, I think when you first start out and you're first you know, trying to find your style, mm -hmm. um, I think it's fine to go all over the place. Uh, eventually, you will land on a style. I just think that's inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, but that so. doesn't, doesn't stall your creativity mm -mm. then? No, no. Mm -hmm. I like to try all different things. Even now, I like to, I like to think about trying a different... I'd like to go into the ball jointed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would change my style a little bit. Maybe not my style, but my... Um, yeah, I think it would probably change my style. <laughs> uh, it'll still, I think my style kind of goes, comes through no matter what I do. Yeah. But. Uh, Natasha, <clears throat> my favorite artist, Karen, you were amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what clay do you use for faces and hands? What clay? What clay? ProSculpt. Pro yep. Have you played with other, uh, not have. brands, but types of clay, have you? Uh, oil, like oil-based clay, plastiline? Mm, yeah, plastiline Chabon. was the little aardvark that yeah, I did. <laughs> Well, but then you I haven't done that before. <laughs> I was I was really playing. Um, I have I've done a little bit of earth and clay okay. in college, um, you know, firing in a kiln and all that. I haven't done. Let's see, what other kind of clays are there? Chavon. There, there are Chavon. wax based. I have there not are done no. Chavon, which I I would like to try that because I I'd like to get into the casting and molding aspect of mm -hmm. eventually. Why? Um. Because if I'm going to do ball jointed dolls, I think you need sense. to know how to reproduce those. Right, because right. you know nobody wants to make sit and make those little ball <laughs> joints. You know. <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah, not Chabant easy. Yeah, Chavant is something I'd like to try. Marguerite Hansen, I believe you need to be in love with your creativity and fall in love with your creations to make it to make it a gem. Be loved by others. Oh, sorry. These foreigners, they never learn how to read, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's annoying. I believe you need to be in love with your creativity and fall in love with your creations to make it them be loved by others, despite the incredible amount of work. There is a piece of you in each creation. You are incredibly talented and skilled. Your creations come alive. Thank you very Thank you. much. I do believe you have to have a little bit of a love affair mm -hmm. with each, like this little um, guy that I've done, I love him. I love. You I love my him. Sunshine, I love all of them. I mean, uh, they're all my. Yeah, I, you, but he talks you do to you. fall in love as you're working on them. You do kind of fall in love with them a little bit, and yeah, I think that does translate mm -hmm. because people see that and they and they love them as well. I'm a firm believer in energy, and I think energy sticks. Absolutely. Right? And so when you're creating, you're putting energy. So you better not be creating while you're fighting with the husband or something. No. Uh, <laughs> Ness, or thinking, how am I going to pay the light bill, the power bill? And you know, bill? in my saddest moments, I have created some really sad-looking characters. I bet. Just really, like, and I can remember with this one I did, I did her all in blue. She has blue hair, she has blue dress, wow. she has blue eyes, and she's like this. And I was going through a really hard time. Mm -hmm. And I and somebody bought it and said, Oh my gosh, how Sad. do you get that expend like Yep, yep, yep. But yeah. I came through and I'm happy again. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's that you don't have to pity anything. No. I came I came out okay. Yeah. Right? And, and, and the hard you know, times uh, it's part of life. I mean And I think just because you feel sad doesn't mean you shouldn't be creating. I it, no, you because know, you can it, create a you, masterpiece yeah. out of that sadness. You know, create through your sadness, yeah. create through your despair. Um, it, it does help. Create through it, every it emotion getting, that you have, yeah. right? It helps get through it mm -hmm. and and know that you do come out. Yeah, you do come out okay. Uh, Nancy, thank you, ladies. I'm so happy to talk to you both. I love you, and thank you love for you, this Nance. wonderful session. Yeah. Yes, and if you have any final questions, please send to Karen. She's an amazing, <laughs> amazing being. Uh, you know, you're not going to believe this. I have the question right here. Right now, now. Right here. You went again. <laughs> age is, I think age is playing a factor <laughs> lately. <laughs> I think we're tired. We've been here all day. We've right? been sculpting and talking and... You made the decision to take this professionally. Uh, can I assume you were already married? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, how was the talk at home? Because you used to be mm. a dental hygienist, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I don't know how much money they make or not, but it's the steady, mm. I, I could mm -hmm. assume. Steady, so you yeah. came to the husband, hi, honey, I'm a sculptor <laughs> now. 
<laughs> yeah. How was it? Well, my husband is amazing. He's he's yeah. He pops in the studio yeah, sometimes. Yeah, he works yeah, yeah. just up the street. <laughs> um, but he's a, he's my biggest fan, so that's important mm -hmm. to have somebody on your side. And he's always been a big support of, of my painting. I, it, we lived in England for a time, and, and I taught painting classes there. He, he made sure we bought a house that had a place that I could do that. Mm. So he's always been a big support. Um, and, you know, when I'd come home from work and just like, oh, I hate working for Dennis. I hate <laughs> them. And he would say, you know, would love it if you could just stay at home and mm -hmm. do your art all day. If you could make that work, it'd be amazing. So when I said, you know, I think I can do this. I think I can be mm -hmm. good at this. He was so supportive. And yeah, he, he still needed me to work. Um, but he was, and we had a little boy, and it was just like, you know. And a I, horse. And, oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what I was saying. <laughs> um, but he's always been super supportive. So mm -hmm. I think you need that. Yeah. Um, in a spouse, mm -hmm. because if you don't have the support and you're constantly battling, I, I've talked to other people that will say, gosh, my husband just is not on board with this. And he's like, when you stop playing with dolls, you know, dolls, and it's like, they're not dolls. I'm actually trying to create art, you know. That's, I feel sorry for that because mm -hmm. I haven't had to deal with that. Mm -hmm. I've had nothing but, you know, support. And he'll, Every once in a while, he'll come in and go, oh, honey, that's not. And he couldn't sculpt his way out of a paper bag, so I just don't take a lot of steak. Or, or he'll say, oh, the butt is way too big on that thing. <laughs> and I'll just go, just go out. You don't know what you're saying. But he's, yeah, the, you need that support from a spouse or whoever you're with. It's good to have support. You're not always yeah. doing that. That shouldn't stop you either. It right? shouldn't stop you. you. You shouldn't let it. But it is nice to have. <laughs> yes, <laughs> takes a lot out. Yeah. Uh, okay, this I read already. Yeah. Okay, any final advice for people that are starting? You, you for example, Mark Dennis came to you. Dennis, right? Mm -hmm. You should be teaching this. And I know you taught several mm -hmm. in-person classes, but you've been with Curios Mondola now for a year or so. Mm -hmm. You have four courses here. You're teaching to the whole world right now. I know, no, and, I love and that. I know that's good because I feel happy yeah. with that. Uh, do you think this is a... a is this what you're meant to do? It is. Yes. It absolutely is. I've, you know, the most amazing thing is to really, for me, is, is somebody to get, make the comment of like, you know, your work has just made me so happy. Mm -hmm. And I feel so touched when I look at the piece that I bought from you, you know? And to me, that's just like, oh, that it just doesn't get better <laughs> than that. Or to even teach and, and to touch somebody's life in a way that they now have a purpose of, mm -hmm. of doing things. And, and I just, I think I've found it. I think this is what I've always meant to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's awesome to have a purpose. It is. It is cool. It is. Kathleen say, my husband bought me clay so I would stay away from his welding machine. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I'm trying to learn now. Oh, welding. that's funny. Yeah. And Karen, you, uh, Nancy say, you're starting to speak with an accent. Well, I have that effect on people, I guess. <laughs> well, I lived in England for 10 years. And when I'm around somebody that speaks, mm -hmm. I pick it up. I'm kind of a mirror that yeah, way. Yeah. And um, if someone was here from England, I'd be, I'd be talking like Talk that. I, I would. I'd be like, oh, would you like a cup of tea? Oh, isn't that lovely? You know, I, yeah, I am kind of a mirror that way. So if I am speaking in an accent, I'm kind of all over the place with that. <laughs> Very enjoyable, Gwen is saying, and motivating. Good. That's so cool. I, 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 I'm so happy you guys yeah. have enjoyed. Well, so I, I do want to say mm -hmm. that the people that are, are watching and, and, you know, trying to get through, don't give up. Yeah. That's, I think that's, that's the, it. Don't the, give up. Just keep The most important forward. part, right? It is. Not in, to give in, up when you feel anything. you cannot do it. In anything in your life, don't give up. Mm -hmm. and, and put yourself <laughs> with other people that are like-minded. Yes. I mean, you don't have to be isolated as an artist. And today, for example, we have the benefit of social media and the groups. Like Jared has mm -hmm. a group that I think 
I love that group. I, I mean, it's mm -hmm. unbelievable the amount of talent of some people. Yes. And at the same time that they humble you because you say, okay, when a scale of <laughs> one to 10, they are 10, I'm two and a half. Yeah, but, that but they motivate you. Yeah, to that shouldn't um, discourage you. I, I had that too when I was first going to my first shows. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I am never going to get there. But it, there are lots and lots of talented people mm -hmm. out there. And some of them just don't make the grade because they don't, they give up. Mm -hmm. So exactly. if you're not gonna give up and you keep going, those other people do. <laughs> so eventually we all kind of move up. It's the people that don't give up that yeah. are the ones that, that yeah. really are successful. It's, it's just understanding that Frustration is part of the process. And there's process. lots of creative... Right, some days the clay cracks. Yeah. Some days you... Some I days saw you the burn. other day on the forum, actually, a guy, I think he had a head, and it was amazing, and he went to put in the car, and he fell, and he fell flat on oh. the face. Right? So well. <laughs> frustration is part of the it process. It's going to it. happen no matter how talented you are. Just mm -hmm. go through that. Yeah. Uh, Linda say, can't wait for Baker Palooza. Baker Palooza, <laughs> we do it every year. It's awesome. Awesome. What is Baker Palooza? Oh, Baker Palooza. We, we, I have these girls that we all get together. They're, my, they're students. Uh -huh. but, but we all get together and we decided last year that we were going to call it Baker Palooza. Because we've fun. done this. Is, what is it, Linda? Like, is this our third year? Ooh. One, two, three, third. So next year will be our fourth year of doing this. And we usually meet in North Carolina. Uh -huh. we meet, usually we meet at a hotel, but this last time we met at, at the, one of the ladies' houses. Uh -huh. She had it right on the beach. Ooh. It was like a party. Awesome, I'm telling awesome. you, I've never laughed so much. Well, yeah, I have, but we laugh a lot. <laughs> and it's, yeah, we call it Baker Palooza. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Girls, they yeah. gotta have fun. It's pretty uh. awesome. Terry. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your experience and insight on the business side of being an artist. Nancy, uh, you were both such a positive inspiration. And Karen, you have been there when I needed a, as a friend. Thank Aww. you. Oh, Love that's you, That's so Nance. sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. It's, it's a long really, day for it, you, it I know. It's a long day, but lots of fun. <laughs> lots of fun. Uh, Karen is still live tomorrow <laughs> and the day after because she's doing a live stream course on how to sculpt and costume an anthropomorphic I'm almost getting that word. Anthropomorphic. Rabbit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rabbit, I get that, right. Yeah. Uh, so you can join her at CuriousMondo.com. It's also live. You can interact. So much fun. That's and, a button. Yeah. And yeah. next week, another creativity in focus for you. So don't forget, we always appreciate, we appreciate shares, comments, hearts. Yeah, I just got to know that. Did you know that? What? Hearts on the video are more important than the thumbs up. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and if you put an emotion like, wow, that better. Facebook shows better than others. Oh. So that's that's my new secret for you. So <laughs> please take a moment to do, do the that. Wow. Do the wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it shows to more people out there. It's safe, right? We're not selling anything. And I'll see you back here next Tuesday. Thank Bye, you so everyone. much. <laughs>